wildlife is everywhere, up on mountains, in the desert, and sometimes in the middle of town. Hey, come check this out. What is it? Just come look. Fine. Ew, that's so gross. What is it? Raccoon poop. My dad says raccoons poop in the same place every single time. Well, I'm glad it's in your yard, not mine. Hey, the raccoon was here this morning. Look, I even got a picture. Oh, cool. Well, let me see. Wow, that's really cool. Not really. Now we have to be really careful with Lucky. Dad says the raccoon could really hurt our dog if she tries to chase it. Why would a raccoon even come into your yard? I thought they were wild animals. I don't know. Maybe it was hungry. What would it eat here in your yard? Well, there are lots of things. Wildlife is frequently drawn to urban areas because towns can provide good habitat. You know, food, water, shelter, and space. Take food. The things we grow to eat, such as our fruit trees and gardens, can make a yummy snack for wildlife. Even your landscaping can be a meal for a wild animal. But space? Sure. Space is where food, water, and shelter are found. How much space do you have in your town? Do you have rivers, ponds, or lakes for water? What about trees for shelter? Or someone's back deck? Yeah, that's where this raccoon is living. Urban areas can provide habitat for smaller animals like fox, raccoons, and hawks. Sometimes even bigger animals like deer make a city their home especially in the winter. Deep snow in the high country brings animals down to lower elevations. They're looking for areas where there's less snow, temperatures are warmer, and it's easier to find food. These areas are called winter ranges. When people build homes in animals' winter range, wildlife may have no other place to go. So what happens to that wildlife in town? Well, life in a city can be hard for some wildlife. They can be hit by cars, chased by dogs, and may even starve if they can't find enough to eat. So why don't we feed them? Here, Carson. Well, sometimes we do. But certain wildlife, like songbirds, don't become dependent on the food in your bird feeders. And while it can be fun to watch the birds in your yard, if you run out of food, the birds will just move on to other food sources. But you don't want to feed most other wild animals because they do become dependent on your handout, and that can cause problems. Large animals like deer and elk will gather around food sources and never leave. Stronger animals get all the food, leaving little for others that may really need it. And once you start feeding, everybody brings their friends. It's just like kids. If you sneak a cookie in class, someone will notice. Then someone else, and then two more, and then a few more. <laughs> well, you get the idea. Also, just like in a crowded classroom, if someone gets a cold, everyone gets sick. The same thing happens to animals, and they can't stay home from school. And it's like your dog can get sick from eating your food, especially chocolate. Animals like deer and elk can die from being fed the wrong thing. And think about this. These are wild animals. If we make them dependent upon us for food, are they really still wild? Wildlife that's no longer wild can be a hazard to humans and themselves. A thousand pound moose can be kind of scary if it doesn't run away. Having wildlife in an urban area can really add a lot to our lives, but there's a balance. Don't leave your dog food outside to tempt the raccoons, but remember it's okay to build a backyard for the birds. Enjoy the wildlife you see. Glad they're wild. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, material for educators and parents, and much more. You'll find it all at sciencetrek.org. <laughs>